Well, happy Friday, everybody. We are coming towards the end of February and we're rocketing, aren't we? Um, if we're at the end of February and March is on Monday, that means we're, we're kind of coming to, into the sort of end of the first quarter of this year. It's gone fast. I hope it's been gentle and kind to you. I hope that, you know, that news, if you're in the UK at least, and maybe wherever else you are, news of, um, numbers dropping with COVID and uh, positive roadmaps out of lockdown are having a good impact on you, as well as the vaccine. I don't know if you've had a chance to have your vaccine yet. Um, I was able to have my first one, so my arm is still a bit sore, <laughs> got a bit of a headache too, <laughs> but all, all good and not complaining, delighted, because it means I can hopefully as things open up and you know still continue to be safe for myself my clients my supervisees my students who come here to the sound story center oh i've moved the camera a little bit so you have a slightly different background view more of my symbols up here <laughs> just nice to see them isn't it so happy friday i want to just let you know that i have this video which is a recorded video up at 10 a.m. on my Fridays because my Facebook Lives were struggling with the audio. And as you can see, I've got my microphone right here. I might put it even nearer. And I bought another microphone, that didn't work. The internet made the image quality come and go. So I'm trying this. And I can see there's a slight delay between my speaking and the audio, I think. Anyway, I'm trying different ways, but I am here. I'm actually online. Uh, if anybody wants to message to test, <laughs> I am here. So my presence is still here, even though this is a recording you're listening to. It's just to get through those techie issues, but I'm here till till 10.30 UK time. So if anyone texts, puts in a message, I'll message straight back, even while my video is playing. See, I can multitask. <laughs> There's a clone of me. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about very briefly before we get into the topic of the day, which is all about the HSP, the highly sensitive person or the highly sensitive therapist, because I think that is what a lot of us therapists are. And I'll get to that in a minute. But I just wanted to say I'm so excited. Sound story world, <laughs> sound story world wise, because I have a lovely cohort of eight beautiful people who are joining me uh, on March the 6th for the next online level one training. And um, there really isn't much more space. I can move it to 10, but if you want to jump on, this is your last time. I'll put the link below, but uh, very happy if you want to wait because we've got a July, July 3rd, 7th, ooh, 3rd, 10th and 17th is the next one being run online. So have a look if you want to do that instead. Um, and also we've got the Sand Story Skills Trainer Program that's coming up in April, the April half term, five mornings in a row. <laughs> and it, it enables you to be a trainer to teach others Sand Story Skills. And that is for non-therapists that you're teaching that to. But I'll tell you more about that in the few weeks coming up in case that's interesting to you. Um, right, so let's get to the topic in hand because I want to keep these videos from, from getting too long. So the topic in hand is about the highly sensitive person. Um, and this is really the brilliant book and the research done about it um, is by Elaine Aaron, PhD. She's also, you can just see a few things on YouTube uh, with her talking. I always like to see a person. So I go look at that and then I have a look at the book in the book but also online you can do a little self-test it's just very quick i think there are 25 or 27 questions that you just click yes if you agree to them or you leave it blank and it gives you a sort of sense a number sense a data sense isn't it of whether you have the traits of a highly sensitive person and i'll explain that in a minute or not or if you do but on a continuum where you are an extremely HSP, highly sensitive person, or not extremely, you know, you might be mildly HSP. I think I'm, I'm moving, I think I'm three quarters of the way towards extreme. I don't think I am extreme, um, but I found it fascinating and I've only kind of stumbled across it, but already 
for my own personal growth it has put it's been a frame isn't it when we learn about something not as a label but as a frame a context to explore within it's a container too um, and this is just for traits it doesn't personality traits it doesn't mean you have a disorder that you're overly sensitive in in a negative way i think you can be <laughs> overly sensitive in a negative way but apparently you can according to society um and um uh, yeah so it's not in the dsm it's not a mental uh, health or a, a mental label it is a tendency to and it's totally genetic actually so um it's not about whether you want to be or don't want to be it's a genetic inherited trait of sensitivity and by sensitivity there are four main categories that Dr. Elaine Aaron talks about. And she talks about D-O-E-S. I love a good ac an acronym. Does, but I like pronouncing it as does, as in the female deer. Doe a deer? <laughs> female deer. <laughs> well, does um, is D stands for deeply processing. Now, I bet your bottom dollar <laughs> that you are a deeply processing kind of a person. I think most of these may be why therapists, HSPs end up being therapists. A lot are psychotherapists, by the way, according to her research. A lot of um, them are artists and uh, musicians and creative people. And I think anyone who works in the creative field of therapy, sound therapy, <laughs> sound story, probably has somewhere on that continuum some HSP trait. So deep, deeply processes. And that is that we reflect a lot on ourselves, on the situation, on another person's um, uh, statements to us, the way they behave towards us, the way we behave to others. It's a very reflective, self-aware, uh, including very spiritual, um, exploration. That's the first one, D, deeply processing. Okay. O stands for overstimulated. As she says, over arousal. We get easily over aroused. Now, for me in my world, arousal is to do with sexual arousal more than anything else, but she doesn't mean it in that term. So I still like the word overstimulated. Uh, I certainly I noticed that. And I wonder if that's true for you. Do you get overstimulated and that's to do with that's the genetic part of it where uh, our senses are fine-tuned have to say <laughs> it's a bit of a superpower um it's, it's got its pros but it's got its cons and you know but i kind of look at it there's a kind of gift in there isn't there that we process and i think that's why we tune in we can attune really deeply to our clients so i wonder if that's you um but we pick up Ooh, we pick up and we get overstimulated. So to be 100% honest with you, I used to think because I'm an introvert, I like the quiet. This sound, the silence, the peace of ordered calm, having a frame, having a gentleness around, the quiet, not overstimulated. I'm, I've never been a pub club <laughs> a party person. And of course, growing up and, you know, at certain times in your life, if you're not one of those, you're very much not part of your group. Um, so you kind of force yourself because society really is made up of 80 percent. No, hang on. Let's get this right. Sorry. Made of more. I don't know what the percentage is, but more extroverts and introverts. And I used to put everything down to introversion within me. But actually looking at hsp it's more than introversion it's more than shyness which is what society might look at it and call uh, timidity um low self-esteem but it's not those things actually that can, that can be part of it but it's this deeper thing this broader thing called hsp it's a fantastic book she really knuckles down and unpacks it all and i i like a good unpacker <laughs> and then looking at my experience and i and I hope, you know, if this is new to you, that you might want to look at the book. I'll put the link um, and just see, do the little self-test online first. See if that, you know, you might not like it because some people don't like labels and it's not a label, but it can feel a bit like um, you're having fit in something. But no, it's to see if this 
has infiltrated within you and it just reframes a lot. In fact, I'm finding it extremely empowering. In my Monday morning ritual this morning, I was absolutely oh, having aha eureka moments one after the other. So that's, oh, we get overstimulated by noise, by light. Um, I'm noticing the light on my face and it's a little bit too bright for me, but I'm, I'm bearing with it because at least you can see well. <laughs> uh, noise, we get very drained by all of that. We need a lot more alone time and we have to up our self-care. D-O-E. E stands for two things. One, the first is empathy. We're very, very empathic. Woo! Isn't that us as therapists? I would say. <laughs> Maybe some have that inherently within them um, and come to being a therapist because it feels a kind of natural fit to who they are um, so that they are the therapy. That is my, that is my song we are the therapy so it's for empathy but it's also for um, emotionally and she writes emotionally reactive but I like to tweak that and say emotionally responsive that we respond emotionally with the heart instinctively first originally you know that comes through um, not that we're not um, using our head as well but we have a we I mean I, I can't watch adverts with babies without tearing up and I used to think it was hormonal <laughs> something but I think actually there is the vulnerability and the innocence and I have a sense of empathy towards that baby on the television um gosh I remember as the course director doing the certificate in therapeutic play skills I had to play a video on attachment it was produced by Bowlby uh, and his associates and in it they do Mary Ainsworth strange situation procedure in which a baby is left by itself for a little while. Oh, watching it while my students were watching it, I would go to the back of the room because I would tear up. I would get really emotional and I would look to see if any other students responded. And um, maybe out of a group of 20, about five would. They would be trying not to cry, <laughs> watching that baby desperately wanting its mummy. So there is that emotional sensitivity and responsiveness. The final one, S, it's kind of something I've said before, it's the um, awareness of subtle changes um, in sensory um, intake. The light changes, the temperature changes, the facial muscles, muscles change. I mean, I used to work um, as a play therapist for deaf children and my ability to sense the changes in their signing, in their body language, in their facial expressions, um, meant that I was pretty good at tuning in and picking up what they were meaning, even when my British sign language was kind of only growing, you know. So I just really want to bring that to our attention because I, I have this sneaky feeling that we are creatives, we are therapists, we are empathic, we process deeply, we feel deeply, we ponder on the deep things of life. Uh, and um, we struggle with chit chat, struggle <laughs> with small talk, awful at small talk. I can do it, I can do it, but hard. Um, and there are so many other amazing qualities to us and realizing that there are bits of this that don't fit me and bits that do fit me, feel like I'm coming to know myself from my little hood, little Lara, and how she had to deal with and cope with things and how society was structured at that time, which didn't and still doesn't um, validate and value this, these qualities too much. Um, but what's so interesting, I'll finish with a bit of statistics if I can remember them. So 20% uh, of the whole population has HSP trait. 20%, 80% are non-HSP. <laughs> Um, we need as a society, as a world, to have 20%. Um, it's that beautiful 80-20% thing. 20% uh, because we are the sort of the priestly, thoughtful, um, empathic, holding our growth and development, deepening it, while the 80% are the kings marching forward and, you know, conquering and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so that is one. The other interesting thing is, um, let's get this right, 70% of HSPs are introverts, but 30% are not. 
And I have a buddy who's an HSP and she's an extrovert. So if you're an extrovert and thinking, oh, I might not, I can't be an HSP. Um, you, you could come under that 30%. So 70% are introvert, 30% are extrovert. Uh, I've said that wrong. Yes, no, I've said that right. 30% are extrovert. The other last statistic, and I didn't write this down, so I'm impressed with myself, is you don't have to be male or female. It doesn't matter. 50% are male HSPs and 50% are female HSPs. So again, very interesting. Male HSPs, I think, have a harder time because being male in our Western society, at least, is um, it's not um, supported to have those uh, gentler qualities of sensitivity and empathy and deeply processing. They're not considered masculine in our in our patriarchal Western society. So from littlehood, um, male HSPs get a much tougher time. And I really hope men and women who are HSPs who have struggled with that uh, parents not knowing or understanding or knowing how to support society and the communities they grew up in. I mean, because we deeply process, we need to take that really to an awesome therapist, hopefully an HSP therapist <laughs> who can understand what that's like and to be different in this world. Oh, internet connection going a bit. So I'm going to wrap up. I think that was the main things I was going to say, but I'm sure there'll be more coming up. Oh, my. Oh, I can see it's slowing down. All right, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to be here for the next half hour. So if you want to ask any questions or um, contribute in any way, I'll just say hello. That'd be lovely. Till next week, tune in. I might put this on my YouTube channel, actually. I've got one video. I have got a YouTube channel. <laughs> I need to update it. How do I switch off? Stop. Okay, bye. See you next Friday. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs>